All right, here we are doing a Facebook Live, trying to give you guys a little bit of information about what's going on in Chile. So I've got my phone here, and if all this works well, I should be able to keep up with um, questions that are coming in and people that are following. Uh, just give you a little bit of information about what's going on. Um, it's been pretty exciting over the last day or so because we've seen, actually, you know, this is not showing me that I am that I'm connected. I'm trying to get this set up so that I can follow you guys and because the idea would be with this live feed if you have questions you can send them in I can see them and then answer them and tell you a little bit about this project um, here in Chile. So taking a couple of minutes for us to get rolling and for a few of you guys to get connected and I don't think that it's going to work here on my phone. So I've got Daniel Sparks that is just about three foot over here. I would twist the camera, but it's a little far from where I'm sitting. He's going to see, and he is going to let me know if you guys uh, want to know something. But let me tell you a little bit about some of our churches. So we have right now in Santiago, churches that are being started, <clears throat> pastored, and led by guys that are involved in the Chile Training Center, and even one that's outside of, of Santiago. But there are, I think there's seven that are here in the city. Uh, that are from the team of missionaries and, and pastors and things that are working together in the Chile Training Center. And so of, of those churches, a lot of the pastors are talking about right now how their local congregation can get involved in this project. And we've already heard back from two of them that this past Sunday, you know, the, the members got together and met to discuss how they could be involved. Uh, the two of those churches together are going to give over or right around $2,000, which is an extremely encouraging thing. Um, I think we're going to get somewhere between five dollars and $10,000 between the churches here in Chile for the training center, which might not sound like a really big deal to you guys, but you got to think about churches that might have, I'd probably say on the lower end of a budget will be about $200 a month to a higher end, maybe being $2,000 a month church budget. So we're talking about the churches in Chile um, looking at the average budgets of those, you know, they're looking at giving somewhere between, you know, six to 12 months of their operating expenses for a, for a uh, month for the entire church looking to give that, which is just an incredible thing. You got to imagine going in <clears throat> into some of these churches, you know, the auditoriums might be a couple of times the size of your dining room and we'll squeeze 30, 40, 50 people into a really small space. Uh, churches that are very simple, that are working and serving in, in, in very uh, challenged areas of the city that are really wanting to get involved, that are really wanting to have a part. It was very encouraging for me whenever all these details started coming together just about a week ago and we began to discuss it. Um, several of them were like, okay, how can we be involved? We know that there's a lot of churches and supporters that want to be involved from the US and maybe other places, but how can we be involved? How can we give? How can we take, take part in what God's doing here in the training center? Uh, which is an exciting thing because it's not just something that a, that a group of missionaries are trying to coordinate, but it's something that local churches and local pastors are very excited about and, and really encouraged about what God's going to do. You know, we started out the training center several years ago with three students back in 2008. And God's been blessing as it's grown. And really over the last maybe three years, we've gone from about 12 or 13 students up to where we're at now at 35 students. And if you look at the growth, it's just such an, an encouraging thing. Because when we think about church planning in Chile, we're really thinking about not starting one church, pastoring one church, not starting two or three churches and pastoring two or three churches, but really our goal would be to see multiple churches started inside the city and outside of, of the city. And so I think we got a question from what I'm, what I'm seeing here. Do we have a question, something that came up? We do not, yeah. Okay, we do not. I, thought, I saw somebody raising their, their hand. Okay, well, there's a few people saying hello. Anything specific, Daniel? No, just Josh Ewing said praying for y'all and the work that is going on. Very exciting. Well, thank you, Josh. I appreciate that. Josh and I have been friends since back in high school. Um, actually, he was one of the key pivotal people that encouraged me in my Christian walk as a teenager. I got saved when I was 16, and that following year after I got saved, Josh was probably the most 
encouraging person and the person that influenced me the most to really serve the Lord. And I remember we used to sit around and talk about serving the Lord and things like that. Used to meet before high school started and talk about our devotions. And so we appreciate Josh Ewing and his family a whole lot. So one of our goals, you know, in a city of, of 7 million would be to see a church started for every 50,000 people. So if you think about a church uh, or a city of 7 million people and having a ch well, at least one church for every 50,000, we would need about 140 churches, which is just an incredible goal. And the truth is, for a lot of, uh, of, of churches, whether it's in the U.S. or here in Chile, for one church to, to really reach 50,000 people would be um, very difficult. And so we probably need a whole lot more churches than one for every 50,000. But just thinking about those numbers, there's a whole lot that needs to be done. And so a training center is a great opportunity to prepare multiple people for the ministry. Bob and Joanne Hufton say, <clears throat> Hi, Jason, praying for you and all in your ministry. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Guys, we appreciate your prayers and appreciate uh, all that y'all do to be a part of the ministry here in Chile. All right, anything else right now, Daniel? Nothing else. Fantastic. So what we're going to do probably over the next 30 days, because as you guys know, uh, we've stepped out by faith as we've been praying over, over the last year for some very specific things, praying very specifically that God would allow us in His timing to find a specific piece of property that, that would be in a particular geographic location. We've actually, we were praying about three specific um, subway stops here in the city. If God would allow us to find something within a mile of one of those three, um, by faith we stepped out and said, all right, maybe a, a budget around $250,000, which sounds like a lot of money, and it is a lot of money. But here in the capital city, in a, in a mega city like, like what we live in, even in the lower middle class areas of town, to find a simple house, you know, a house that might be 1,200 square feet, you're looking at paying somewhere in the ballpark of 100 to 120, $130,000. So we were asking the Lord for a piece of property that would be what is equivalent to about five houses and that would have at least uh, space for four classrooms for 40 students that would have some office space even maybe a small apartment where you know someone could stay and and, and kind of keep keep up the place and things like that some bathrooms because uh, we need somebody there for security purposes so you know lo looking at those different things lord if you would allow us to find something that size that would be within a mile of one of these three subway stops um, that would have this classroom space or the space to build something. Um, and if we could do all of that and th they accept some kind of um, payment agreement because we didn't have all the money, we don't have all the money up front. So we were praying about that. And then all of a sudden something came up. As many of you know, uh, it, it's a small school that has closed down. I say small because a lot of times schools here, just like where you're from probably, might have a thousand students, but this was a school that had about 100, 150 students going to it. Be ideal for what we're doing right now in the training center and the next five, 10, 15 years of growth. And there's even opportunities to add on and build on there if, if God were to bless and we would need more space. And so all these things came together. I presented a counter offer actually for a significant amount less than what they were asking uh, to make sure we were inside of our budget. And God works everything, as you all know, and now we have 30 days to get $50,000 together. Uh, we already have a, a certain amount that's been given. We need 50 more for signing, and then we'll have two following payments for that to finish up that $250,000. So it's exciting to see what God's doing. And we want to keep you guys um, up to date on what the Lord's doing. And I was so encouraged about these Chilean churches that decided to give and several of the other pastors that told me that they are talking with their church and they want to be a part and they want to give. And I, I know this is encouraging for me to see churches that have limited means and would be many times from very humble beginnings that are stepping out by faith, that are giving sacrificially to make this happen. I even, um, one, of the, one of the young guys, young couple, I actually married them just a just a, a few months ago was telling me, okay, I think we have a few things as a family we're gonna to try to sell 
and maybe we can sell a few things to get some money together. He actually told me, he said, all right, my, we got married you know, about a year ago and my wife has her wedding dress that we're not gonna use anymore and I have my suit from when we got married that I'm not gonna use anymore because as many of us do, once he got married, he gained some weight. So he said, I think we're gonna take the wedding dress and the suit and sell those two so that we can use those, those funds to give toward the, the training center, which, you know, that's just an extremely humbling, encouraging thing to see guys stepping out by faith, getting excited about what the Lord's doing, and, and giving sacrificially to make this possible to reach more people with the gospel and train more here in Chile. All right, I think we have... Yes, we have a few questions. Okay, here we go. Before the first question, Austin Gardner, Pastor Austin Gardner says, well, as your home church pastor, we love you and believe in this ministry. We have given it as a church, and my wife and I are also giving. And then he says, your beard matches the curtains. <laughs> we try to coordinate the beard and the curtains. <laughs> well, you know, about the beard, if you notice from the top of my head, I'm losing a lot. I have to bend over to, to fix my hair in the morning in the mirror. And so as it's falling off, from the top, we're trying to gather it here on the bottom so that I can keep up the same same amount of hair on the head. It's just it's just relocating. But I appreciate that encouragement there, Pastor Gardner. We love you guys. Appreciate all that you're doing there from Vision and your support, your friendship, your prayers, and, and your generosity. Thank you so much. We have Raleigh Hill who asked how many church planners are currently being trained in the training center. All right, hey Raleigh, it's uh, good to hear from you and thank you so much for watching. We have 35 students that are in the training center and if you could think about it, <clears throat> you know, you have all these local churches that have been, have been planted. All of these churches are of the ones, you know, that have come out of the training center. The, the oldest one will be 12 years old, which is the first church that we started back when we arrived here in Chile. Since then, as you guys know, several missionaries have come and they've been a part of church planning, Jason Kenney specifically, and David White that's helping in one of the church plants that came out of um, Jason Kenney's first church, Hope Baptist Church. And then out of our first church plant, um, Faith Baptist Church, there's been a, a couple of churches or a few churches that have started out of there. And so from all of these churches, there's students that are studying currently in the training center. We have men and women. So if we look at the group of men, there's some that feel God's putting in their heart a special desire to prepare for ministry. They're not exactly sure what, what God has in, you know, has in plan for them, in store for them, uh, whether it's you know, pastoring or, or, or serving as an assistant or youth pastor or being a missionary or church planner. And then there's other guys that are completely 100% convinced this is what God's will is for their life. So there's a group of about five or six of those that are preparing right now for future church plants within the next, let's say, 12, 18, 24 months. There's probably another group of, of 10 or so guys that are very interested in full-time ministry and trying to figure out what God wants for them. There's a few other men that that are very interested but still working a full-time job, maybe taking three or four classes and, and trying to figure out what God wants of them and where they fit into the whole thing. There's a good group of young ladies and, and women that are taking classes as well. Some of the pastor's wives are taking classes. Um, one of the young ladies that we recorded a testimonial video last night with, she's actually engaged or about to be engaged. I think it might be official. I'm not 100% sure on that. Maybe by the time you see the video, uh, she's engaged to one of the, the young church planners here in the, in the training center. So that kind of gives you a little bit of an idea about what's going on. All right, Josh Ewing asks, what is the training center's student's timeline look like from start to finish? That's a great question. So what is the timeline for a student in the training center from start to finish? So what we're trying to do, we're doing trimesters, 13 week trimesters, and we have 16 hours of classes a week. And those trimesters, if you add it up, we ended up studying about 10 months out of the year. We have a couple of weeks off for winter break. Of course, winter break for us is July because we're in South, um, South America and the Southern Hemisphere. And then we have a couple of months off in summer, January and February off uh, from studies. The rest of the time, we're going 16 hours a week offering classes. 
And then in the, in the afternoons, the guys were able to serve in the local churches and the ministries and get practical experience in the afternoon while getting the academic preparation in the mornings. So with that set up, if you go through eight trimesters, you know, which would be similar to eight semesters um, of a typical Bible college, then these guys in a little less than three years can get out of, of their training. You know, if you think about how, how much time does a, does a guy need to be in the ministry? This is a, a very often discussed thing in missions. And I grew up in a pastor's home. Many of you have, have known our family and knew my dad, Randy Holt, and uh, he served as a pastor of a few churches in the Atlanta area. And I grew up in a pastor's home, always in church. And then when I felt God was calling me to the ministry, he felt, as well as everyone else, that you know I needed, I needed further preparation. So I went to Bible college and finished my, my four-year degree. And then after that, started raising support and uh, went to the mission field. And everyone thought that I needed, and I believed I needed, another couple of years working with a veteran missionary, learning the language, getting more training. And then when I got to the field, most people thought, man, you're still so young <clears throat> and so inexperienced. And you're, you're, you're barely, barely sufficiently prepared for the ministry, although you've spent 20-something years in a pastor's home and then four years of Bible college and two years getting training on the field. And so then we, you know, we come to a, a situation like South America, and you're working with people that have grown up with no background in the Bible, no background about good doctrine. Oftentimes, <clears throat> excuse me, guys. Got a little bit of allergies going on here <clears throat> as we're going into spring. So uh, you have to be patient here with my, my voice. And so you get here in a setting like in South America and you have a guy that has grown up probably as a Catholic, as a cultural Catholic, which means you might go to mass once every two or three years and, and really just have a bit of a religious life and that's about it. Very low morality, very low expectations on, on, on many of those kinds of levels. So you have one of those guys get saved and all the baggage that comes with that, whether it's you know, their lifestyle and their, their limited biblical information that is very flawed on multiple levels. And some people think, okay, let's give them six weeks of training or six months of training and they're gonna be ready to go out and to start a church and lead a church and do the ministry well. Well, it seems to me, you know, pretty, pretty, um, Seems to, I want to say laughable, but that might be a little offensive to the, some of the people that promote those kinds of things. So <laughs> maybe I should say something like, it seems hard for me to understand. And so what we're trying to do is to lean heavily into very intense training, very intense theological training, very intense practical training, um, all of that coupled with opportunities serving in the local church in a mentor relationship with their pastor and other missionaries. And, and really, you know, it's more like, what did Jesus do? Jesus spent three years more or less with his guys, and it was very, you know, it was a personal, um, intensive. You know, they were together for extended periods of time and he gave them practical opportunities to get involved in ministry, then come back and he would tell them, this is why this didn't work and this is how to do this and the other, you know, working on their spiritual life, working on their practical side and, and all these kinds of things. And so we're trying to follow a method that would be similar. We don't wanna take forever and a day to get people into the ministry because there's an urgency. People are dying and going to hell and we need to reach our world with the gospel. But coupled with that urgency, you know, we, we want to try to help guys to have a thorough preparation. So with both of those firmly held passions, we are trying to develop everything that we do at the training center. So about two years and two trimesters, so a little less than three years, somebody can be completely finished with the program. And, and here, here's another thing that's, that's really curious. Most of the guys, we, we recorded some testimonial videos last night, most of the guys that are second or third year students, which would be like juniors or seniors in a typical Bible college, most of them are already pastoring a church plant, they're helping start a church plant, or they're working as a part-time or full-time assistant pastor already. So most of the guys, by the time they graduate, you know, they've already preached 
let's say 100, 150 full length messages. They've already discipled five or 10 individuals and maybe even families. They've already led ministries, grown Sunday school classes, grown church plants, been involved in the ministry. So it's not like, hey, just go sit in the class and then when you're done, you know, spend another two or three years sitting on the front row of your church and after another two or three years, maybe you can start teaching a class. Um, it's, it's not really like that at all. And so I don't know if that helps explain and there might be some more questions about that. Josh Ewing also asks, asks, what are current graduates doing? All right, what are current graduates doing? All of our, all the churches that have been started are either being pastored solely by guys that graduated from the Bible College, or they are working together with guys, or, you know, with another missionary that has um, come here and is working in the ministry. And so pretty much everybody is, is in church planning different roles one way or another. All right, another question? Yes. Uh, Chris Gardner asks, what, wasn't there a law that passed that made the price go down uh, and private schools start exiting the market? All right, so this is a great question. And we appreciate that, Chris. And Chris has been helping us with a lot of this video recording things. And we're, we're thankful for um, all of his advice, expertise, and support with the, this project. So here's the deal. Um, Chile passed a new law. Before, there were three educational uh, segments inside of Chile. So you had private schools that are just like they sound. You know, you pay the tuition, fund it all. On the other side, you have public schools, and public schools would be fully state-funded. But in the middle, you had this very large market that was pretty much all of middle class, and even some of your upper-lower class and your lower-middle class. This, this, this school dynamic that was half and half. So it's half um, subsidized by the government and half subsidized by private tuition. Well, this market over the last, I don't know, 20, 30 years really began to explode in Chile as the middle class has grown. And you had a lot of people that were going into the education business and they were starting these schools for profit and making a lot of money off of it. And so they would set up these you know, big infrastructures and, and get 1,000, 2,000 students in the school and they're charging them and then they're also charging the government and making a lot of money. Well, Chile has passed laws in the last year or two that have really restricted what those schools can do. And they're trying to make education be all nonprofit. So if there are these mix options, that those mix op options aren't making the owners rich. I don't know if I'm explaining this well or not. And so because of the laws that have changed, um, a lot of these schools that have been functioning for 10, 20, 30 years uh, are, are no longer viable for the owners, so the owners are selling them. And But here, here's the deal. Um, because the school has a particular zoning, it can be used for education, it can be used for uh, religious purposes, it can be used for several things, but you can get a larger piece of property for a lower price, so you can get an infrastructure because it can't be used for a lot of commercial, commercial or industrial usages. I'm thinking all these things in Spanish and then trying to translate them on the fly. So if you see me stumbling for words, it's because um, probably the Spanish word is trying to squeeze out. But you have all these changes in the laws that make it possible. So here we are, God's leading in the ministry, calling people into the ministry. We're training them in the local church. We're starting to outgrow the facilities of that local church. Uh, we have students from one of the churches in the far north where um, Camilo and David White are working that can't even make it down to where we've been doing classes because it's too far for them to come back and forth. Probably, I don't know, I don't want to exaggerate, but an hour and a half to an hour and 45 minutes each way on public transportation. So all these things are going on and we're really knowing that God's leading us to get a centralized location to help us continue to grow, to reach more, um, more of the churches. And, and also uh, to serve better and also to function you know, um, throughout the week. Because if you can imagine being a local pastor and having 35 students come in and out of your, your church, we do Monday night, Tuesday night, um, Tuesday morning, Wednesday morning classes, sometimes Saturday classes. And as things grow, we're wanting to do more of like a layman's institute coupled with the Bible college class, plus 
training for pastors that are already pastors. So imagine all of that going on in the local church. It's just not really um, feasible to do all that around the ministries and things that are going on. So all these different elements are coming into play all at the same time that Chili's changing the laws and properties that should be priced more like four hundred five hundred thousand dollars are being sold for two hundred fifty three hundred three hundred fifty thousand dollars and, and it gives us the perfect opportunity to go in and to get something that would be ideal for what we need at a discounted price but you know we know the lord he works all these things together right it helps us to be at the point in ministry right when we could take advantage of these kinds of situations and opportunities that's a great question all right the next one Except you kind of touched on some. Um, Josh Ewing asked what the like the typical week for a student is in the training center. All right, great. Um, we we've tried several different teaching schedules because we're trying to serve the local churches and the pastors to the best way possible. And so we've done all mornings Tuesday through through Friday five five hours a morning. We've done that or four hours a morning, so that would be sixteen hours. We've done that schedule. Uh, Right now we're doing a couple of nights because like I said at the beginning, some people asked who's studying in the Bible college. We have a few men that are working full-time jobs that have families. We have a a couple that are university students, but they feel like God's calling them into the ministry. So we opened up some of our freshman classes on Monday and Tuesday night so that some of these people can, can get involved, can study, can start serving more in their local churches and really see kind of where God's leading them. So if you can kind of think of it in a funnel approach, you know, we can have a level for laymen, kind of a layman's institute, and then those that are laymen that feel like God's maybe leading them to get more involved in ministry, maybe even full time, they're open to it. Then we have guys that are definitely wanting to be in vocational ministry, full-time ministry, but not really sure about exactly where. And so we just keep training all these different segments of people and helping them grow. Because even if somebody decides, you know, I'm going to be a faithful layman, I'm going to be a deacon in my local church, this is where God's leading me. You know, if they can have a uh, some some Bible doctrines, Bible study method classes and things like that, it'd be fantastic. It'd be a great a great help for the local church. So I don't know if that explains it a little bit. Depending on the student's availability of time, um, many of them, you know, throughout the week, they're discipling families, they're discipling young people, they're they're doing leading youth ministries. Most of our churches have like a teen meeting on Friday nights or Saturday nights. They're teaching Sunday school at their local church, um, involved in music ministry, kids ministry, teens ministries, and and all the things that go into that with a local church and a church plant. So that's kind of the schedule there. I don't know if there might be another question. If not, we're going to wrap this up and meet back uh, later on. Here's what we're going to do. I don't want to be, I don't want to overload you guys, but I, I do want you to know about what's going on here in Chile. And I know that many have written. I think right now we have, if I'm not mistaken, this morning I saw, is it 120 shares that we had? Um, or is it 220 shares? I think it's 220 shares of the giving link that have been shared already only on Facebook. And that's just incredible that 220 times people, all right, now we got, you got the bright Jason again. They just uh, turned the light off that had gone, which is good because I'm, I'm kind of translucent here. You know, I, there's not a whole lot of pigmentation going on. So this light really helps out. So anyway, back on, back on target. My target, 220 shares, there we go. Uh, We've already had a lot of people write in saying they're praying. People, many have already started giving. Uh, this morning, I believe that we're up to $5,895, if I'm not mistaken, that have been given in the last five days. And it, it's just an incredible thing to see how the Lord's bringing all this together. We have 25 days left. We need to get up to $50,000 uh, to sign. And then once we sign, we'll have two following payments, but we'll have a bit of a breather between each one. The second payment will be due uh, in January, Lord willing, and the last one will be due in May. All of that will be uh, finalized the day that we sign, because based on that, we'll have exactly four months until, you know, the 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 second one, and then um, four months until the third one after the second payment. And right now, um, we have 
uh, you know, the lawyer and the real estate agent, they're putting together all the stuff for closing. And so I'm praying with you all and asking you to pray with me that the Lord will bring all this finances together so that we can do what he has for us here in Chile. So thank you for being a part. Thank you for praying for us. Thank you for supporting the ministry. Thank you for taking the time to watch this. Please share what's going on. Um, find that giving link. You can go to chilechurchplanning.com.